Hi guys! I hope the videos are helping your understanding of vocal technique and classical singing so far. Each topic is not completely separated and instead they are complementary of one another. Today's topic is vowel modification. Vowel modification is a technical tool for register unification which we learned from the last video. Vowel modification is deeply related to appoggio as well. So, this video will include a brief review on appoggio and register. Watch the previous videos on appoggio and register if necessary. All right, I think we're ready now. We've learned that the register unification is the most desired goal in classical singing technique from the previous video on register. The register unification is achieved by a balanced combination of appoggio, muscle equilibrium, and vowel modification. Some common phenomena around Vasaji is worth of our observation. Breath energy will increase as pitch and intensity rise around Vasaji, and this is more obvious at the secondo passaggio. As breath energy increases, appoggio with abdominal muscle antagonism is demanded for singing in passaggi area. Let's recap a few items about appoggio. Number one, the sternum remains at a comfortable elevated position throughout the breath cycle. Number two, the rib cage is fully expanded. Number three, the diaphragm remains in the low position as long as possible, although this is not controllable by singers. The head and the neck should not be in an extremely elevated or lowered position. Number five, delay the collapse of the torso and maintain the inspiratory position of the upper body. Six, the onset should be executed cleanly and precisely. Seven, Breath renewal should be silent and easy. Let's learn what vowel modification and aggiustamento are. First, what is vowel modification? As a singer approaches the primo passaggio and then again at each successive passaggio, certain vocal adjustments are necessary in order for the tone to remain consistent and for there to be no audible breaks in the voice. As pitch ascends, singer must open the mouth and drop the jaw. This gradual adjustment of the mouth and the jaw is called aggiustamento. This aggiustamento follows a natural vowel modification process. As the mouth gradually opens, the vowel tends to move to a neighboring vowel as you can see in the vowel chart. As singers approach to the secondo passaggio, the vowel modification becomes more obvious. Even with the effort for vowel modification, vowel integrity should still be maintained in any pitches below G5 for clear diction. After G5, all vowels sound pretty similar. If vowel modification is applied too extremely, the chiaroscuro balance is destroyed. Singers must strive to balance the vocal production between dark and bright quality of the sound at all times. Some singers make these vowel modifications naturally and correctly without even being aware of them. Many singers, however, resist the natural tendencies of the voice, struggling to sing vowels exactly as they sound in speech all the way to the top of the voice range because they believe that they are supposed to. Then, it becomes necessary for them to learn the adjustment of singing vowels in the upper extension. So, what happens if singers avoid the vowel modification? The tone will be edgy and shrill. Therefore, the vocal consistency or register unification would be hard to achieve if vowel modification is not executed. Singers should sing vowels that free up the voice. When vowels are modified correctly, 
the singers experience more comfort, the tone is more beautiful, and the air supply lasts longer. With the aid of vowel modification, singers will have fewer intonation problems, better resonance across their ranges, more carrying power, easier production of forte and piano, clear diction, and a much better blend. The vowel formants theory offers a scientific rationale to understanding the necessity of vowel modification. So let's study about formants. A formant is a resonance of the vocal tract. Every resonating cavity resonates at its own frequency. Our vocal tract is highly adjustable and capable of resonating multiple frequencies, which we call formants. On a spectrogram, you will see each vowel has different formant structures. What you have to observe carefully is the first and the second formants on spectrograms. The first and the second formants are the most relevant to vowel differentiation. They are also the most adjustable. They are adjusted by shapes and actions of the articulators, particularly the tongue, jaw, mouth, lips, soft palate, the pharynx and the larynx will influence F1 and F2. In a simple way, the larger an instrument is, the lower it sounds. This also means that the smaller an instrument is, the higher it sounds. For voice, if the space is large, it resonates at low frequency. On the other hand, if the space is small, it resonates at high frequency. The pharynx is the first formant space, and the oral cavity, the mouth, is the second formant space. The tongue is a movable partition between the pharynx and the mouth. For E, there is very little space in the mouth, which means the second formant is high frequency. Meanwhile, the pharynx for E has large space, which means low frequency in the first formant. Now, ah is the opposite side from E. You have to open the mouth and drop the jaw to produce ah. Therefore, you have larger space in the oral cavity for ah, which means low frequency in the second formant. At the same time, ah makes the pharyngeal space smaller, so the first formant frequency is high frequency. Okay, now you think why and how is the formant theory relevant to vowel modification? Here is why. The first formant of E resonates in low frequency, which means the pharynx is large. So E vowel sounds the best in lower pitches. When singers approach a higher pitch on an E vowel, they can increase the first formant frequency by making the pharyngeal area smaller. Opening the mouth and dropping the jaw will adjust the pharyngeal area smaller, therefore moves the first formant to the higher frequency. Does it make sense so far? As singers drop the jaw, open the mouth, the natural shape of E vowel has to adjust towards a darker neighbor vowel on a vowel modification chart. This is the rationale of vowel modification. The three articulators decide the structures of the first and second formants for each vowel. The three deciding factors for the formants are the location of the tongue, the shape of the lips, and the opening of the jaw. The tongue, the lips, and the jaw will influence vocal tract change and ultimately cause different structures of the formants. The effort to adjust the formants for ideal chiaroscuro is called formant tuning. Because formants are the result of the vocal tract adjustment, formant tuning is also called vocal tract tuning. Vowel modification is another name for formant tuning. 
Performant tuning is a tool to achieve the chiaroscuro or resonance balance. Whether or not classical composers understood the formant theory, the best composers always chose the favorable vowels on the high and climactic notes. These composers knew what sounded the best in given voice types. Unfortunately, this is not always the case, especially in music written since the early 20th century. Singers then must find an ideal vowel for the climactic moment to best serve the sound that matches the pitch. Trust that consonants and context often help text remain understandable when singers must modify their vowels at higher notes. Here is an exercise for achieving aggiustamento. Please try to make a gradual vowel modification and avoid drastic vowel changes. Find a good posture of the head, the neck, and the sternum. We can address the aggiustamento more practically during your lesson when we actually apply the concept to your repertoire. For now, practice this exercise with a series of different vowels. Also, try using several different neighboring keys. We've covered many items today. Among them, there are some complicated concepts to comprehend. Don't be discouraged yet just because you don't understand everything for now. It'll slowly come to you and this will eventually become so much fun to apply for your beautiful singing. I promise. I will answer any of your questions during your lessons. Stay well. I'll see you next time.